Welcome to Design Talk 6. This design talk is about a Japanese toolbox that I have designed. It's based on reference material I found on the internet. So let's look at this new design and discuss what my motivations were, what my approach was, and what my thoughts were as I went along. Eventually we'll look closely at the live model and drawings in SolidWorks. The 3D printed model seen here is a 50% size print of what I spec'd in the drawings. As I mentioned in Design Talk Notchbox, I've been thinking about hinges and catches for 3D printed boxes. This Japanese toolbox was also designed with those things in mind, although no hinges were used in this model. Check out Notchbox Design Talk if you want an additional look at hinges and catches and a deeper look at 3D printer considerations. Also check out my TurboCAD tip number 33 if you want to see additional insights into 3D printing. If you follow Scott Turner's YouTube channel, you'll have seen a recent video he produced about the pictured Japanese toolbox he created without power tools. It's a pretty slick design that I like very much. I suppose one drawback would be that it would be easy to lose the locking member if it was not always put back immediately after use. I suppose one could attach a small decorative chain so that could never get lost. That's certainly something one could think about as they pondered this design. So a quick Google search shows that this is a real popular design that can be tweaked to suit all manner of tastes. As is often the case, I decided that I'd be using SolidWorks for this project. I love the parametric and constraint features of the program. It's the ideal CAD software program to use when one is developing new products and many edits are expected to be made over the course of development. In the images shown here, you can see that this box can be resized using equation-driven dimensions. Anyway, let's move into SOLIDWORKS now and look at the Japanese toolbox in all of its glory. So here we are in SOLIDWORKS now. I wanted to mention that this model was created as a multi-body part. This is to take advantage of converting it to weldments and using the cut list functions that accompany that. So to open this box, you pull out this locking member, and then you pull the top off, which consists of this part, this part, and this part. We'll just do a little bit of a exploded view to have a look at that. So you select this, you pull it out, set it aside. Then you select this component, this one, and this one, which are all one unit, as I said. Then you pull it back, to about there, so that the front is clear, or the back, I guess, in this case. And then we go ahead and we select the same unit again, and we tip it up and pull it out, out of the way, just like so. So I'll just cancel that and zoom ISO view. So next we're going to go ahead and look at the whole exploded view of this, all of its parts. So I think I made an exploded view here, so let's go ahead and and look at that, just like so. Okay, we'll collapse that back down. At this point, we're going to go ahead and look at the build, just to see how it was done. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm going to roll up to the first step. Here you can see I just created a flat base. This is going to be an outer base. We're going to actually create a little bit of an inner base that tucks up inside to the walls, just to give it a little more strength and stability. So this was just a simple rectangle extruded. Next I created a side. Again, just an extruded rectangle placed at the right location. And then I cut out the four holes for the tenons. Next I mirror copied that to the other side. Then I created a plane. That's at this location here. So I'm going to create the profile for the end of it from the side, including the tenons, and then extrude it to its thickness just like so. Then I chamfer the ends down here, here, and on the opposite side. Then I mirror copied that to the opposite side. Next I did another extrusion. That's that inside base I said. Again, that's just an extruded rectangle. Next I created the finger grip, and then I added a bit of a profile in it, and I mirror copied that to the opposite side. Next I created this end cap, mirror copied that to the opposite side. Next I created the lid, 
this component that attaches to the lid, this one at the other side. Now you can see that it's created on a bit of an angle here, so that when the lock goes in, it's squishing inward, pushing this back. Here I also added a chamfer, so when the locking mechanism goes in, it not only pushes this back, this overhang keeps it from coming out the top. So next I added the key, and I added the matching chamfer on that, just like so. As for 3D printing, I created the box in one print, excluding these units here. So that's the orientation it sat, and the print was made straight up. I used supports when I printed, and it added a few just in this location. Same on the opposite side, but it didn't add any in here. You ended up with a bit of a filament drop down in this area under here, but that was easily cleaned up with a razor knife. This piece was printed on its own, just in the same orientation, and the lid was printed in this orientation as well. So let's move on to the drawings. So here we are with the drawing series of 13 sheets. Here we're starting out with the assembly drawing. My assembly drawings typically include an ISO view, exploded view, and a bill of materials. We also have the title block down here, but I'm not really going to discuss that since I've discussed that in other design talks. We also see a couple of notes on here. One is to look to sheet two for materials, finishes, grain, and other information. And it also says here, note glue only assembly. So no fasteners per se. The next sheet here, we have materials, finish. So I've also used an exploded view here, but I've also put some materials on here so we can see what orientation the grain is to travel. Here I'm showing a closed and an open version. And here I've used part of the cut list to illustrate sizes and what material and finishes go on these, and quantity, of course. So this was the default cut list. You can see that it gives a description. Now we added materials in a different way. This is for specifically adding materials through the material functions, and they don't always have what a person wants, so you can make up your own. It also includes bounding boxes if you tell it to do so. So I didn't think there was room for this full one on this sheet, so I would have had to put it on a separate sheet, and I decided I didn't want to do that at this time, so I thought we could get away with this one here. So next is the layout sheet. So this for me is just typically some views with the envelope sizes. Now I didn't create a separate assembly drawing for this top portion, which would be a sub-assembly, I guess. So I debated whether or not to add a additional sheet to include these, but I decided after the fact that maybe I wouldn't, and I just added a few extra dimensions in here to illustrate that. So if you were drawing this, what would you do? Would you include an extra sheet? Give it some thought. Next we move on to all the individual parts, so then we'll go through these pretty quick. So here on the bottom I've started to add how many units are required for each. I don't know if you want to have those or not, because they are definitely on the bill of material, and these independent notes won't change if you ended up making changes where the bill of materials will update. So that's another thing that a person has to consider. So outer base with just some dimensions. So next is the side panel with just three views and some dimensions. I didn't add the material and finish here because they are added to the bill of materials. I think that's sufficient. Next is the end panel, two required. Here we have some views, a detailed view to illustrate these down here. And then the finger handle, three views and dimensions, of course. Next is those top end pieces. Then we have the top panel. Again, just three views and some dimensions. Cross members for the top. This is the one at the rear of the lid. The next sheet is the top cross member at the front. So I'm just showing where that is in this extra view. Next is the locking member. Again, I'm showing a separate view, illustrating where it is in this unit. 
all the appropriate dimensions and views. And lastly, the inner base, just three views with some dimensions. So that's the design in a nutshell and the thoughts and the motivations behind it. This is not something I'll be developing as a manufactured product, but it sure could be. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation and that it'll give you some things to think about while you're designing your own products. If you'd like to see some TurboCAD tips for free, visit Don Check's TurboCAD tips page. If you're interested in delving deeper into TurboCAD learning, be sure to check out the full project tutorials on my Textual Creations shopping page. See you next time.